everybody. Let's uh, try that again. Rick Bassman here for Talking Tough, trying something uh, different today. We had some technical difficulties, not surprising because uh, it's not, uh, not my forte for sure. My producer, John Pozarowski, is on the line from the two-man, uh, the two-man, sorry, John, oh, man. the uh, two-man power trip podcast network. And John is a tech whiz, but he's on the other side of the country. So if he were here, this would all be working, but I think we're good now. Uh, I'm up in uh, the wilderness of Maui, as I explain each week before we get started with my four pit bulls. We are remote and isolated up here with no other persons, cars, homes nearby. So in the event someone comes within a quarter mile of this place, you're going to hear my dogs go freaking nuts. So there's me and my four maniacal little pit bulls. I always say it in advance because inevitably there's going to be an explosion of barking somewhere during the podcast. And uh, not too much I can do about that other than just kind of enjoy it and go with it. On the dogs, this always allows me to give the one plug I have to give each podcast. Please check out Bully Dog Rescue Coalition. It is a nonprofit that takes care of four amazing women, including the actress Linda Blair, who are killing themselves almost quite literally trying to save the world for pit bulls. It's bullydogrescue.com. And you'll see my four dogs, Ramon, Gogo, Eos, and Dennis on there as the, uh, the spokes dogs, if you will. So we're on Facebook Live. Our guest today, and I'll bring them on in just a couple of minutes, somebody that I've known for a long time, have had a, uh, a pretty good amount of uh, uh, involvement with, uh, dealings with in business. I'd like to call him a friend. I don't know if he feels the same way in return. We'll find out. Um, so the guy we're bringing on shortly his name is Tank Abbott, and I'm sure everybody out there knows of Tank Abbott. He is a legend and an icon from the mixed martial arts game. Uh, he crossed over very successfully into pro wrestling. But beyond that, in, in my mind, when I first started watching mixed martial arts, long before it was even called mixed martial arts, Tank Abbott would have been the fighter that, and not just a fighter, the personality, I should say, that I would have conjured up in my mind that would be the, um, you know, the, the poster person for what a no-holds-barred mixed martial artist, ultimate fighter, whatever you want to call it, would be. Um, I first saw him on pay-per-view. Um, I'm like, that's the guy. That's, that's what we all want to watch. That's who we want to watch. I was fascinated. I immediately had a certain perception of him that I'm going to want to talk to him about. And later turned that perception on its ear when I got to know him. Uh, now, this is one of the toughest individuals I've ever known, mentally, physically, otherwise. And medically speaking, you guys have heard about my trials and tribulation, you know, stage four lung cancer, heart attacks, strokes, double kidney failure, so on, and life-threatening infections, so on and so forth. And I always think my story is about the epitome of medical disasters Abbott. This guy has been through it probably, I don't know how many times more than I have, but he's really been through it. And he is a survivor. He's here today with us. Um, without further ado, I want to bring on a survivor, an icon, a legend, and my friend, David Tank Abbott. Dave, are you there? Hey, I'm here. Hello, everybody. Hey, Rick. How you doing? And I'm doing good, man. How are you? More importantly... How are you doing today? You know what? Um, it's been a rough road, but uh, there's no quitting me, and uh, I'm here. I'm still you know, I've almost died twice now. Uh, you know, I, I died on the, um, the table the first time when they were doing the transplant. It's a I liver transplant, that, right? A, li a liver transplant. I thought it was. Uh, I thought that was a tough one, but. Uh, Slowly but surely, as uh, time was going by, I was getting more and more pain in my organs and everything else, and I couldn't figure out what was going on. Went to the doctors many times. They couldn't figure it out. Ended up checking into Cedar sinai They still couldn't figure it out. And then uh, finally, a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago, they did a test, very risky and uh, they tested me for uh, uh, things, parasites. And it seems that we all have parasites. 
but when you're taking anti-rejection uh, medicine for your new organs, it allows them to uh, flourish and grow and become more prominent. And next thing I know, they were taking over my body. And luckily, the, the surgeons and the doctors and the great staff at, at the Cedar sinai I decided to take a parasite test. And they came in with walking in and said, hey, we found out the problem. It's going to take a couple of days of pills and you should be back to close to normal. I'm about a week into taking six pills a day. And that's pretty much clearing out my system. And I dodged death. I had a contagious uh, doctor, the contagious disease doctor. Yeah, infectious with, disease, I'll bet that's called. I have one or two of those of my own. Is that, is that the uh, specialty? Yes, and he has, a, uh, he has a, a badge in the whole nine yards, and he told me I was two days away from death again, once again. So luckily oh, for so my, you, you keep. You keep escaping that, and, and I want to come back to, to all this a uh -huh. um, little bit later. If that, You keep escaping death is what I mean. It, I know it's yeah. been crazy. We've talked quite a bit about it. And, you know, like I said at the opening, when I, when I hear what you've been through, I'm like, my God, that's far worse than what I've been through, and I always thought I, I had the prize. So, dude, as usual, someone's uh, taking the silver medal to your gold, I think. Yeah, oh, well, you know, I appreciate it. That's a nice, uh, nice, nice way to put it. But uh, I don't like going down that road, Mike. No, man, <laughs> Mike. It's, it's not really a badge of honor. And, and it really yeah, is. It, a badge of honor yeah. to survive and survive yeah. with a positive attitude, I think. And, and that's one thing I want to ask you, man, because when I've talked to you about it, yeah. I know, like, there's so many people. I know you don't, you don't spend a lot of time on social media, Dave, but right, yeah. there's so many people on there that are just going on and on about their trials. And it's like, and dude, I don't mean to make little of anybody's trials. I don't, because I feel for everybody. But it's like, right. oh, no, I stubbed my toe. And then there's 1,800 posts on their stubbed toe. Um, right. I've, in all the conversations we've had about this, I've never once gotten – like one iota of the notion that you've felt sorry for yourself or have done like any poor me uh, of thinking um, during this period. Have you? No, I've never had a woe is me kind of situation. I, I, I've always took full blame for everything I did. I had a lot of fun getting to where I got, you know, partying my ass off. But uh, as far as feeling sorry for myself or doing whatever, I, I never I had that feeling. I always said, hey, man, put your ears back and, tackle whatever's in front of you and that's what I, I've been doing and uh, I've been lucky and I'm, uh, hopefully I'm not running out of luck because uh, the consequences are, are not always so uh, well here's, here's a weird question then for you man and I'd try to answer this one for myself I guess uh -huh. if you had to predict this is a really weird question I'm going to ask if you had to predict how many more years do you think you got left Oh man, I don't I don't have a prediction because you know I can't tell you how many hours and how many days I stared at the hospital uh, a hospital room ceiling and and just pondered the things about life, and all the things that I've gone through. You know, I, talking about floating down uh, the clouds of leaving your body and going somewhere else. And then kind of having a moment of waking up saying, holy, holy Toledo, man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving my body. That No, I'm not ready for that. And, uh, and this is something you did experience, is that right? Uh, it's an absolute truth to mm -hmm. that. And I did experience that. And, and I said, hell no, I'm not going that way. I guess no pun intended there. But uh, anyways, I felt myself come back to my body and, and then I metaphorically had a, a, a deep breath of a sigh of relief and said, nope, it's not time for me now. And I've, I've had those experiences, and, and I know what that's, they're that's all about. That's man. I didn't get any of those. I kind of wish I had. Um, you know, Dave, I have, to, I have to admit here, I had, during all my stuff I mentioned, I had, and I've been embarrassed to say this, Unfortunately, too many of those like poor me moments. I, I'm, I'm over that these days. Things happen now. I'm like, next. It's all good because I, I feel like finally I'm learning perspective on, on how to deal with the trials and tribulations of life and whatnot. But I want to ask you, so you, you, never, you never got into that. But by the way, I mean, before I ask the next question, I want to mention this. We have a lot of people watching on Facebook Live right now. 
And yeah. I want to mention to the people, now I'm looking into the camera, hey, everybody, um, I see there's a lot of questions and comments, and if I put my glasses on, I'm going to look worse than I already do, so that's why you see me squinting at the screen. Um, I got my glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need them, don't we? Um, yeah. So, guys, somewhere down the road of this interview, maybe 15, 20 minutes from now, if you have questions, I'll mention that and then put them up there, um, and we'll ask Dave. But in the meantime, please just keep your comments coming. I appreciate them, and I will definitely answer all of them later. So, Dave, mm-hmm. hey, here's a question I wanted to get back to. So all of these people out there that are referenced that are in pain these days, especially now more than ever, do, is there a basic Tank Abbott philosophy one or advice one that you give to people that, that are facing some really serious stuff? Well, you know, I've, I've always uh, marched to a different drummer, but one thing I can tell you is that I'm a, I'm a warrior, and, and, you know, a lot of people call themselves warriors, and they're, they're not, but... That's that's my definition of being a warrior, and that's just being a tough son of a bitch. And you you take you take everything as a fight. You know that I never patted my like if you got into fighting, I never patted my record or did anything to like it was like okay, you want to fight, we'll fight. I wasn't always trying to protect my record or anything else. Ninety percent of my time, I thought I was sick or hurt or injured. I didn't make excuses. I never had to be perfect. I, I, you know, so as far as that went, it's like I am, you know, a warrior, and I stretch out, and I don't care if I'm fighting a parasite, I'm fighting a, a banged up liver and a banged up set of kidneys. But I, I was there as a as a, a warrior to fight and as a battle, and everything I I, I go after is like. It's not a it's not a made up thing. I am who I am, and I'm a warrior in my in my heart. And you, you can, you know, the haters out there they can make up all these excuses about whatever. But the bottom line is, every battle or anything that gets put in front of me, I will I will go after and I will attack. And that's just the philosophy of my life. And I call it is my. Is that a philosophy pleasure. that you think anybody can adopt, or do you have to be born with that? Well, I think it's kind of innate, but hey, you know what? You can nurture it. it yeah, I think it, so too. All right, like I, I said, I'm I'm in process myself, and things that would have like really put me upside process. down a few years ago, yeah. they, they roll off now. So I think there's always a chance for a better day, man. Hey, I want you, you mentioned fighting, and I'm looking to see who's on here right now. Like like Adam Watts. Hey, Adam, my uh, the head instructor from my old gym, OC Dojo. Now the uh, the owner of Fight Strong in San Clemente, one, one of the one of the, the true good dudes of mixed martial arts, and I see a lot of guys from MMA on here, so I'm sure they're going to want to hear all all the tales and all that, and we'll we'll get to wrestling and fighting, but there's this one I want to interject real quickly because it's just just because, and it's kind of fun, and I think it illustrates a lot of uh, it's a good example of how I think you were describing yourself a moment ago. You remember. Uh, Remember our little adventure in London with Cage Rage Tank? Oh, yeah, it was a jet lag, but, you know, I remember. <laughs> here, here, okay, everybody, he, he was jet lagged. Here, here, here's why, at least I'm going to I'm gonna st- say, Dave, why I think you were jet lagged. Because Tank fought a guy named Gary Turner in London for Cage Rage. That was a huge promotion in Europe at that point. You may not have heard of Gary Turner, but this guy was legitimately one of the better fighters on the planet at that time. And he was booked against Bob Sapp in the main event. And I was representing Bob at that point. And two days before the fight, Bob said, oh, shoot, I can't do this. And I'm not going to get into the reason why. And the promoter, Dave O'Donnell, one of my favorite guys in the business, but he was freaking out, understandably. The place was sold out. He's like, oh, my God, how are we ever going to pull off a replacement? There's maybe like two or three names in the whole world that might potentially be a suitable replacement. And we went through a couple names, and, and Tank Abbott was one of them. So if you remember this, Dave, I called you. And I, I know your memory is a lot better than mine, but I'm going to paraphrase how I remember this going down and tell me if I, if I got it wrong or whatever the case may be. So I called Tank, and I'm like, hey, main event, London, Cage Rage, two days from now. Keep in mind it's a day of flying. And I said, what do you think? And Tank says, well, how much? 
And I told him it was a good amount, especially at, at that point in time. It was true main event money. And if I remember this right, Tank, what you told me was this. Well, I haven't been training. I certainly can't start training now. I'm actually in the bar at the moment while we're talking. So tell the promoter this. Yeah, I'll take it. Just send me a car, get to the air. And, and by the way, everybody out there, Tank was never a prima donna. These are basic things you would ask for. He's always very easy to work with in these regards. Yeah, get me to the airport, put me on a plane. I'm going to get there, go to the hotel. I'm going to head right to the bar. And when it's fight time, tell them to come get me. They won't have any trouble. I'll get right off the bar stool, go to the building, we'll fight. I've got 30 to 60 good seconds in me, win, lose, or draw, and then back back to the bar. If they can handle that, I'll do it. That sound about right? Sounds about uh, right dead on. (laughs) <laughs> okay, good. And I, and I always love that, man. I mean, how many how many people like that, especially at that point in mixed martial arts, would have taken a main event against a killer like that? And, uh, and you know, it was awesome. I mean, if, if anybody cares to look it up, because I'm sure most people will now, it, it kind of went down exactly as you predicted, man. You, you bull rushed the guy, and it was exciting. And you I, caught caught, him. I, caught, I caught him in the, in the first with a good shot, and he went down. And then I, I jumped on top of him because I didn't want him to get up. <laughs> right, because you got about 20 seconds at that point, and you're probably getting tired all bit. Yeah, that's exactly what went down. I'll tell you what, I, I grabbed a beer from my corner man, Eddie Reese, <laughs> right. and I drank, I, I drank that half beer in the, in the bar in the in the cage, and I walked right out back and just about had a heart attack out in the freezing cold out there. Yeah, yeah, I remember, man. Uh, well, I was uh, always. Uh, yeah. It's always an adventure, always an adventure working with you, and I, I always appreciated the attitude because, you know, what what you said you would do, you always did, and it was always entertaining and and exciting. Uh, John, I see our producer John Pozarowski is watching this as well. John, I have two questions for you. One's technical, and one's about Tank. Are you there, John? Yes. First of all, how how is this working out sound wise on your side from Facebook Live? Are we okay? Yeah, very good. Good. So you can hear Tank loud and clear? Mm-hmm. Yep. Good. So I want to make sure everybody, there's a lot of people on, I want to make sure everybody can hear. So here's my second question for you, John. And, mm-hmm. and, and Tank, John hates me for this, because I just like, he's, he's a really nice, mellow, humble guy, and I just constantly put him on the spot when he's, like, I asked him one night on an interview, like, on a scale of 1 to 10, how would he rate his relationship with his wife, and his wife's sitting right there, so <laughs> and, and I know he loves stuff like that. Uh, John. You, yes. You've heard, we've been on the phone with Tank now for about 20 minutes. I'm sure you're starting to get a sense of him. Different than you would have expected or or the same? Oh, different. I'm thinking of the guy that, you know, knocked out Paul Varland in the first round, you know, back in 95. Uh, so I'm thinking, you know, he's going to be this crazy wild man, but he's not. All right. I mean, that that, that part, that part, that side definitely exists, but you, and, and we didn't prepare that question and answer, did we, John? But you gave me exactly what I thought you would say. Um, Dave, I, I want to ask you about your reputation, about yeah. how people perceive you, um, you know, how you'd like to be perceived. My guess is on that question, your answer is, I don't care, and, and, that, and that's fine. But uh, and let, let me just challenge this for a second. I hope you don't mind. When you ask people, you know, what do you think of Tank Abbott? Uh, I'll tell you what I've heard over the years, and you probably know this. You know, the bully, thug, Neanderthal. Uh, I'm sure you've heard this stuff your whole life. Have you? Uh, not my whole life. And, uh, you know, um, the point is, is I, I, like, I want to preface this, this. I really don't care what people think. It, you know what? To me, I, the people that think the way they want to think is because, in in serious terms, they want to be somebody like me, somebody able to kick everybody's ass, and they can't be it. But so they they hate me for hearing the truth because I'll sit around. This this ain't about jumping around and acting like Dennis Rodman just because you can play basketball and you go dress up in a wedding dress and shit like that outside of the ring. And all these people that do all the gimmick stuff, you know, like you, you can probably figure out who dyes their hair and has flames on their shorts and runs around, <laughs> and, you know, they okay. stick yep. a, a loaf of bread between their ass and they just because people thought it was cool. Well, I know um, you're not talking about our good pal Tito Ortiz, but go go ahead, please. Yeah, and well, who else could <laughs> there be just another clown running around like he, he lives my life as a, a warrior, which is 
the furthest thing from the truth. He's a, in my, I've known the man for over 30 years. He's a liar, a thief, a con man, a cheat, uh, just the lowest of scumbag you could ever come across. And I've seen this, this whole, this whole people, you know, everybody wants to be tough. It's almost like that's why they take steroids and all this silly stuff. And it makes me sick. And, you know, they, they go out and they act like they're me. They're the furthest thing from me. I know I've never bullied anybody. I've never done anything like that. And, in fact, I, I always try to find – remember, you tried to put a fight together with some bozo that was gonna, he was going to stop bullying. And I said, no, I'm the bully's bully. I'm I'm the guy you want to be. I want I'm gonna step my boot on your face and show the one up your ass. But um, remember that I can't remember who the guy was. We're gonna fight at. Yeah, that Canada. was uh, that was Daniel Pewter. Yes. Yeah, what what a scumbag that guy turned out to be. And the, the whole the whole thing, you know, I don't remember if you remember the cage rage thing that they brought me back for. And I go, that guy right there, that guy never fight me in a million years. He's a phony jackass like. Well, you know, I, I do remember you telling me that when you got up there and you faced off, you, you came and you said, no, yeah. he's not going to fight me. I do remember that clearly. But yeah. you know what? I, I have to say, and I'm not political, by the way. If I have something mm-hmm. to say about somebody, you know, i.e. Sure. Ultimate Warrior, John Cena, I'll, I'll express my opinion. You know, Pewter, and, and even Tito, so, and, and sorry to butt heads on this, but they've my dealings with these guys have always been fine, whatever. That's neither here nor there and not really something I'm interested in getting into. But, uh, well, well, you know, you can say that, but I'm sure they didn't break into your car and steal checks out of your glove compartment. Nope. I didn't think so, did <laughs> neither, neither one did that. Do you remember – I'm going to switch the subject for a second, then I want to get back mm-hmm. to, you, to your reputation because my, my take on you is totally different than what I've heard from others. And I want to that's – that's what I was setting up. Do you remember the night that you went after a pewter at the UPW Ultimate Pro Wrestling Show at the Galaxy? Oh, we're just having fun. Yeah. And, no, and, I know you were, but I it was. Yeah, but so, you, you you were like all hot under the collar because they ruined the show. Well, you know, yeah, I was. It was funny. We're, so everybody out there, we're at a live uh, Ultimate Pro Wrestling Show, and that's when Pewter had it was a gimmick. John, if I'm wrong, you're really good on on the wrestling facts and trivia. He was doing like a one-minute challenge or something like that where he challenged anybody in the audience to come in and and try to go a minute with him. And obviously, you know, it's it's a work, so the audience are all plants. And we ran through about three or four guys. And Tank happened to be an invited guest that night. And then (laughs) next thing you know, Tank Abbott's in the middle of the ring. (laughs) We're all backstage going, oh, boy, this is not part of the show. This may not be a good thing. And... uh, (laughs) And, and take, I was standing back there. I don't know if you know any of these guys or not, but um, Sylvester Turkai and Tom Howard and Nathan Jones and Sean O'Hare. I mean, all, I all those very real them. guys and big, big guys in their own right. And they're like, well, what do we do? I'm like, let me, <laughs> let me give it a shot. And I remember walking out there by myself, man. You, you couldn't have been cooler about it. And, and, and I, if anything, I don't know if you know this or not, but you, you hugged me and lifted me off my feet. And the the reason that moment is like forever enshrined in my mind is there was a Pro Wrestling Illustrated did a a cartoon on it that month in their edition, which I still have a copy of. I'll have to send it to you. It's pretty funny. Yeah, Uh, I was just trying to fire your show up. And and you did. You did. (laughs) It's Pro Wrestling. It wasn't part of the quote-unquote script, but it was a good moment, man, and and I dug it. But the reason I bring this story up is not just to tell wrestling tales, but that is part of it. That, to me, illustrates who you are, in my opinion. People Uh have a perception of you, and then when it comes down to who you are, man, uh, you've always, in all my experience, have been like one of the easiest people to work with, and and you've been a good guy. And, you know, I have um, have a chapter in my, one chapter in the book that I wrote, Little Big Man, that's devoted to wrestling and fighting, and and I talk about you in there and some some of these escapades that we're discussing, and that how I always considered you one of not, not only the most honorable and reliable guys in the business, but one of the most intelligent and introspective as, as well. And uh, I bring this up only because I think it's cool to you know discuss perception and illusion and, and maybe even turn them on their ear on occasion. 
Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I'm not going to argue with well the nice kind things you said, but it goes back to the way of of I live my life, and that is I'm always a, like a true a warrior. Doesn't lie. He doesn't do all that kind of stuff. He he, he does things that are like a good human being does. And let me tell you something. After sitting in Cedar Sinai for at least thirty days, those people up there are just another walk of life. The doctors, the nurses, and all those people—you got to take your hat off to them and just thank them for every. I did every time I saw them. Sure, they didn't like my angriness when I was in excruciating pain, but well, I, man, I, that's part of it. They understand yeah, that. No, but I just would sit there and thank them so much. You guys, like you don't get. You guys are very special people, and I wish I had half a brain to become a doctor because I would like to help people like that are you know need that kind of help. But uh, it was you know those people are awesome. Did I, it's cool, and, and I appreciate you gave a shout out to Caesars. I, I think I told you in a recent conversation I spent about six months worth of nights there as well, Cedar Sinai, and oh. man, that place absolutely saved my life, not just the medicine, but, but the people. When you're up at 3 in the oh. morning, because, you know, time ceases to exist when you're in that yeah, that's a true position, statement. and they're there yeah. for you, yeah, it, it means everything. So I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm going to give a heavy shout-out to the liver transplant team. And Dr. Yeah, no, no kidding, huh? Dr. So, Nissan, who is absolutely just a master, and then Dr. The Amazing Toto. He always used to tease me, he goes, once you get better, we're going to have a match. Still holding it to it. But, uh, I said, you, uh, yeah. um, <laughs> are, are you, uh, you thinking about getting out on into the gym or to do some road work? Oh, you know what? Right before I, I got sick, I was, you know, I was, I actually went back down. I don't know if you're familiar. I'm sure you are, but Edwards Hill over here in Huntington Beach. Yep. I, I've run up and down that hill at least. Well, in the thousands, I started doing that when I was in high school with my wrestling coach, and he he introduced me to the hill. And I don't think there's anybody alive, runners, non-runners, or anybody else that have run more hills than me up and down that hill. And I just made it back. I put it on my Instagram. I saw it. What's your Instagram? Tank dot Abbott, right? Yes, Tank dot Abbott. Yeah, guys, so, check that out on Instagram, tank.abbott. And I did see that video. Yeah, so I was pretty I amazed know, you were running that hill so so soon that, after coming out of the hospital. Yeah, that's when I woke up sick the next couple of days because I was eating like a madman. And I, and I used to tell my wife, I'd sit there, you know, this is like one of my only confidants. And I'd sit there and go, honey, man, something's not right. I go, I'm not putting any weight on it. And it turns out I was eating for me and a whole slew of uh, parasites. But I go, I can't, I can't put weight on it. It's just ridiculous. I'm losing weight, and then I finally woke up with someone with a blowtorch and a hacksaw cutting me in half, and I'm like going, Oh my God, what the hell is happening to me? So that, well, I was going to the to, to Cedar Sinai and liver transplant and kidney transplant, and they're just shaking their heads, just putting their hands up in the air. I can't tell you what's wrong with you. And then finally they. They did a biopsy on me. They thought my I had bowel. My bowels were blocked. They did a biopsy on me, and then they looked at the thing, and I said, holy shit, look at all these fucking parasites swimming in this in his thing. And the, they were all, like, overjoyed. Like, hey, hey we found you. You're going to die, and we found it. You're, you're the luckiest man around. And that was all due to Dr. Toto. Oh, was, who's the man at the Cedars? But well, he's big, not quite as he's not quite as man as Doctor Nissan, who runs the whole program there. But doctor, um, as, as a admirer of Tank Abbott and as a friend of Dave Abbott, so I'm giving him a yeah. shout out too. And I'm I'm happy you're here with us, man. I, I want to go do a couple of fight questions, man, because we're getting a bunch here. And let's, let's throw it here for a second. Um, first of all, hey Yogi, Yogi Parker. How you doing, buddy? And uh, Guy Guy Grundy is watching. Do you know Guy Grundy? He's challenging you to a fight right now, Tank. Oh, uh, Guy, uh-huh. I'll just give Tank your address, okay? Cool. Now, Guy's a really good friend of mine. He's uh, he, he's a very tough individual, but a good dude, and he's paying respects. He's not challenging you to a fight. Uh-huh. 
I just wanted to put him on the you know, spot. You know, it's hard. You know, it's hard for me to turn down with Coach Dion. You know, I know Coach. that you're yeah, that guy. He's yeah. not turning down your challenge, man. No, um, no. Back in back in the younger days, I'd show up at your house about eight or nine o'clock at night after I had a half gallon down. You want to fight? That's <laughs> All right, guy. Well, that that day still may come. You don't know. We don't know yet. Oh, I don't drink anymore, so. Yeah, you know what? I I, I thought Dave about asking you that question. And yeah. I told him I'd ask you a bunch of stuff that might, you know, be uncomfortable. And, guys, Dave said, ask me anything. And, and I know you meant that. I did yeah. think about asking you about that. Because when you have a liver transplant, don't you have to, like, sign some contract or something that says you won't drink again? Well, they they do that before you do it. But, you know, that you know, alcoholism, which I don't think I'm really truly an alcoholic, even though if you went by my actions. That's more of a funaholic. <laughs> you know, I I've never heard that term, but I would have considered myself the same, so I can relate yeah, to that. So, but you know, so these these people that you know that say that they you know I'm never going to drink again, they're just trying to stay alive. You know, I I I, I had a friend die from uh, what is it? You know, what the hell? I can't help I can't think right now. From uh, cirrhosis, he died, and he, the guy couldn't help himself. It, it's once you get that, you have to have a special kind of, of inner strength. And I, you know, I'm not going to blow my own horn, but I'm blessed with that. I got just said, nope, it's done, putting it down. There's my day, drinking days are over. And uh, you know, I used to tell the the physicians at the liver liver uh, transplant, uh, you know, they go, you need help, you got to go to AA. I go, nope. I'm wow. Well, so you're I'm done. Gonna, you don't drink at all anymore. No. Uh, do you, no. you do you miss it? Yeah, no, I was just telling my wife today, I, go, I wouldn't mind having a drink, and I'd be, you know what, I never will. But I, I go, right. right now, because it's raining and you're in, sitting at home, I, I could turn on YouTube and listen to some ICT or the Smiths or something like that and kick back and enjoy the times and watch their videos. But those days are over with, man. You know, yeah, it was a important uh, part of, oh, you can say your life, all of our lives. I yeah, remember one one time you actually kind of made me drink. Well, not made me, but um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, here's another another tall tale, and tell me if I got this one right or not. But um, yeah, I had uh, I, I was lucky enough to be working with Pride, and I booked uh, Tank in a main event at Pride when they were drawing seventy, eighty thousand people indoors and doing like the biggest TV ratings in the history of Japan, and yeah. Tank went over and main evented against Yoshida, absolute huge legend in Japan. Again, yes. a huge payday for that time also, the kind of money that you, you merited and earned building over your career. So yeah. here, here's a funny thing, man, Dave. I've done bookings, I don't know, for hundreds of, of people over the years. It's a pretty big-name people, too. And uh-huh. you're the only one to date that said, I don't allow anybody to touch my money. Um, you get your commission from me after I get paid. <laughs> and do you, yeah, I'm sure you remember that. That's a policy, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. And I respected it. Um, it was a weird one for me because on the flip side, it's a, you know, who wants to be chasing people for commissions, right? But you, you were always a super honorable about that. So Kate comes home from Japan, again, big, big payday, and calls me up and says, hey, they said they'll send me my money in a few days. And uh, when I get it, I'll let you know. Okay, great. You know, and, you, and I didn't worry about you and you know, or anything of that sort. But you still, you think, okay, I hope I get that call when it comes in, or I don't have to make a bunch of calls. And like two days later, not five days later, whatever it was, Dave calls and says, hey, the money's in. Um, I've got your commission. And I said, great. Uh, let me come pick it up. He goes, oh no, don't worry about it. Um, I'll drop it by. We're gonna go to San Diego. We're going right by your office. Okay, great. So I'm thinking to myself, everybody, not only is Tank Abbott calling me, I, I'm going to put the amount out there because it kind of makes the story fun. Not only is Tank Abbott calling me saying, I've got your 11000 but it's in cash, and I'm going to deliver it to you. I'm like, wow, I just hit the mother load. So a couple hours goes by, about an hour later than you said you would be there. So I call. And do you remember what happened? I remember the uh, the animal park. I don't. Know. Yeah. So so you go. So Tank goes. Oh shoot! We got in the car. 
We started drinking. We caught a buzz. I forgot all about it. We went right past you. We're at San Diego Wild Animal Park. Come pick it up if you want. So I'm going, okay. <laughs> I go, how do I know if I get there and call you that you're not going to be, like, too into the party zone to even answer the phone? And you're like, Rick, I'll answer the phone. Okay. So I'm like, do I want to drive to San Diego? I'm like, yeah, for that amount, that amount of money, sure. Even though I was in great financial shape at that point, that's a lot of money. I'm going to go do that. So I get to the park. I call you. And sure enough, you answer the phone. And then you're like, hold on. And you hand the phone to Eddie Reese. And... <laughs> Yeah, good old Eddie, right? You know Eddie was when he tied one on, <laughs> right? Uh, so Eddie gets on the, and Eddie's like my size, but he's a little killer. And I, I he uh-huh. used to tease me about going, uh, about he and I going. And I'm not afraid of many people and didn't want to stay away from many, but I didn't really want to tangle with Eddie Reese for, you know, in a million years. And uh, he's like, yeah, um, come meet me out front. I'm like, oh, great, okay. So I'm standing in front. I go in there. I go up to the entrance, and he hands me a ticket. He goes, okay, come on in. I'm like, what the hell? So we, he brings me to this pavilion where you and all your, your boys are sitting, and you got those big, giant plastic cups with the rubber animal heads on top of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and yours, of course, is an elephant, naturally. Yeah. And the, uh, Tank used to like to say, I have a mind like an elephant. I'd never forget. And I can tell you from experience that's true. And you're like, hey, Rick. I go, hey, man, how you doing? You got my, you got my money? And he go, yep, it's right here. And he showed it to me. He goes, but you got to drink this first. And well, you made me drink like a 16 ounce. Well, you always call them vodka and cranberry. I don't really know where the cranberry fit into the equation. And uh, <laughs> a little splash. Maybe a half an ounce, 15 and a half ounces of vodka. That's and, uh, right. So you basically made me, I'm going to say made me drink that thing, and I finished it, and you were satisfied, so you handed me the money, and I'm like, well, how the hell am I supposed to drive back to, to San Clemente now? Thanks. You're like, that's why I brought you the, got you the ticket, motherfucker. Uh-huh. And I, dude, I just appreciate that kind of stuff about you. That's really cool. Uh-huh. So I wanted uh-huh. to find a place to work that little story in. That's all. Uh, yeah, and then uh, Eddie was all fired up, and he wanted to fight all the animals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I that, I forgot that part, but now that you say that, that we were it, on that train and he was gonna jump on the back of one of them fucking rhinos and shit. That's a great idea. Great yeah, idea. Oh no, hey, you know, it was, I, I was all down for it. I was like, it's too bad they had the cell phone cameras then. But I was like, yeah, go ahead now, and he was ready to do it. I said, no, 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 no. Yeah, man. <laughs> Maybe it wouldn't have been the best move of all time. Hey, man, for, for the original UFC, what I call the iconic days of UFC, and, and yes. all the guys from that era, most are, are, are friends or at least acquaintances, and you fought a lot of them. You fought Oleg, you fought Fry, you fought Kimo. Uh-huh. Who, people want to know, who did you not fight amongst the big names at that point that you would have liked to have fought? Oh man, you know I don't, I don't even think of any of them. I don't uh, know. It doesn't register the Mark Coleman's or Marco Huasis, nothing of that sort. No, 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 no. I never like, you know, I know there's nothing ever emotional about anything. I'd like to fight Hoist. You know, I, I met Hoist two or three times, and he's a really nice guy. But I would like, of course, yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I would have loved to fight him, and you know, I. I'm a strong believer in size and strength and everything else. And, you know, if you if you really know the history, you know, it was the Gracie commercial one through five. They, you know, but. Oh, they, hell yeah. Yeah, of course it was. The yeah, UFC they, was set up just, to showcase yeah, the Gracie's, yes. They own, they own the show, so they're going to get themselves over. And uh, you can't blame them for that. But I would have loved to fight Hoist. That would have been fun, especially in his heyday. You know, I like. You know, because that's just, it's just logic. You know, you're not going to fight a man that benches over 600 pounds. I pick him up with one arm and throw him across the ring like a, like a styrofoam toy. But, so Hoist would have been the guy. That would have been interesting, man. How come that fight was never made? Was that why? Yeah, yeah exactly right. He was in charge of who was going to fight. Yeah, his brother Horion, right, of course. They weren't gonna. They weren't gonna put the J, uh, the Gracie Jiu Jitsu thing down. And I know there's gonna be a bunch of people out there saying, "Oh no," you know, because 
when you're don't, when you're not a big strong guy benching over 600 pounds and wrestle world class wrestlers and, and and hold your own with them and box with world class boxers and hold your own with them. That's me. I did all that. I ran a marathon just because I don't take steroids and have all the fat burned off my body and all that kind of stuff. That was the guy that could bench over 600 pounds, could run a marathon and kick your ass and not learning jujitsu. Jujitsu is, is, you know, it's real. It works. But when you have a strong wrestling background that you wrestled from when you were 10 years old on, it takes about two months to learn. and, And then it's, really not really effective you can you can use your wrestling uh, grappling background where you wrestle five six times a day on a tournament and have all that experience and shut down jujitsu really easily so all these people out there that train and do all their stuff sure it works but it's it's not like a cure-all but you know so all these people that fight nowadays, they, they have something to grab onto to make themselves feel tough. Like, oh, I'm a jiu-jitsu expert. You know, it's, I, I can get into it, and maybe I'll get into it later. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a skill. It's a skill. It doesn't necessarily make you tough. I, I hear what you're saying. I, I respect the hell out of it. It's real, like you said. But yeah, it, it, it's not, but it doesn't not, make you if, if a you tough know how, If you know degree. how to grapple, not really effective that if you know how to train with it. So, hey, John, are you are you still there? Yes, sir. Did you okay? So, Tank ran marathons, which I which I knew about. He bent six hundred pounds, which I knew about. I also knew that he's a very high level wrestler, you know, you know, amateur wrestler and high level boxer. Did you know all that? Didn't know about the marathons. I knew about wrestling background, obviously boxing. You could tell huge boxing okay. background. Didn't know about the marathons. That's pretty impressive. I ask again only because it's, it just goes back to perception, man. And I'll tell you, Dave, I, you know, I was already in the well into the pro wrestling business at the time you came along into UFC, and mm-hmm. they marketed you brilliantly, man, because I thought you were a they're, street they're, fighter they're, with, no, with no they're, skill. They're, they're, no, 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 no. So, you know what their brilliance was? They allowed me to be real. There was no, there was nothing made up about any of that stuff. That that was one hundred percent me. I was the guy getting out at the street, fighting people. I was the guy. I was the little punk rocker that weighed one hundred and thirty pounds and wrestled in, in high school. That I started wrestling when I was nine, but wrestled in high school at one hundred and thirty pounds. That was like the biggest guy in the school, and. Being that I was punk rock in 1980, you could understand everybody wanted to kick your ass because you. Had oh to yeah, I was, that's, you had to I was around at that time into that same stuff. Of course, yes. Yeah. I know. So, but I was the guy right there, freshman in high school. Go, give me the biggest fucker here. I'll fucking pound his ass. You're crazy, dude. And I'm like, no, I'm real. I'll fucking fight all you guys. And I took that. I ran with that from. My whole life, I, my brother's five years older than me, and he took me to his, you know, he's a football star. My dad's a football coach, the whole nine yards, and my brother was the golden boy goo, football goo. And I, I was like, no, I'm not into that. So my brother went from college or high school uh, football into uh, wrestling. And my brother took me to practice one day, and I, he's five years older than me. And I'm like, hey, I love this. And I started wrestling when I was nine. And so, you know, I've been around wrestling. I was a wrestler, bled blue, you know, I bled wrestling. Yeah, I, I, I know that. I guess my, the point of, like, I, again, I apologize. I interrupt a lot on that now. Um, I, I knew that. I knew it later, not at the time. And the point was, I think they, they intentionally, well, I don't want to say created a perception because, you, as you said, what, what people saw was who you were. So, I, and that's why it worked. I mean, I, I don't yeah. think anybody gave you a script or said, go out there and act tough. We know that wasn't what it was. So my, my question to you is you're out there just being you, mm-hmm. and it catches fire. I mean, it really caught fire. Was there ever a point in time when you suddenly go, fuck, I'm a star? Or did that kind of thinking just never come into your mind? No, you know, it was crazy. Um, 
overnight happened. You talk about these these guys, okay? So Gracie kind of set the stage, and everybody thought they were tough back in the 80s. You know, everybody thought the whole night, you know, oh, I'll kick your ass. Uh, Especially if you went to the gym and, and took steroids, uh, right? Uh, well, you know, it, it, it was like, it was like, you know, it was the very end of people fucking fighting and going, ah, oh, whatever, you kicked my ass, oh, whatever, good job. You know, at a park on the side of the street or something like that. It was the very end of that ending. You know, it, 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 it people were just getting into that and then and then so there was fights going on all the time and so Gracie set the stage and then I came along and I was like fuck and I, I, I you know I, that a perfect day you remember back in the in high school and every the parents would go somewhere and everybody would ride their swing cruisers over there and tear down a house oh my, that was my house yes absolutely yes, well, so, oh, man, so with, I, with the Parties and the uh, and the yeah. teenage girls in the A cup bikini tops running around all yeah. over the place. Yeah. Exactly, you get a girl and I get, you got in in my life. I got a girl and I got in a fight at one of those parties and a, and a good one. Man, I was I was batting a thousand. I was. I, <laughs> I, what I what was were you drinking, person. man? Were you drinking Boone's Farm Strawberry Hill or something stronger? No, I was English eight hundred. Oh, Mad Dog twenty twenty. Oh, the good stuff, yeah. Um, you know, Miller Lite, Miller Beer. So, uh, so you always just had that that fight mentality. So, so you become, so you go to UFC with it. It blows up overnight. Now you're a star. I, I never saw. Well, I didn't know you before that. I just knew you after. And I always thought that you took everything in stride. I mean, did did you ever oh, feel okay, like yeah, a star? Yeah, so, you ever act like so, a star? So, no, yeah. So the whole the whole show is like. I got, I I snuck into that show. They they did all their little research, and they found out. Oh, hey, oh that mother, that guy, that guy's fucking crazy. That guy beats up everybody in Orange County, and they're like, that no, that guy's for real. He's not like. I used to go to dojos. I I go get a twelve pack and drive around town, and I'd pull off into dojos and walk in there and say, who wants to fight? And they're like, what? Well, you gonna you gonna fight anybody? I go, fuck yeah, I'm here to fight. I go, you're fucking crazy, dude. And I'm like, we know how to pull our punches. We know how to do this. It's all Hollywood uh, martial arts bullshit. And I go, well, you, you go. I'll come back next week, see if anybody wants to fight here. And, there. and then I bet you could hear a whole gym like, what was that guy doing? What, what the hell was that about? And so I go fight at this show, and, and they, they were doing all this goofy-ass shit. Like, you can't do this, you can't do that. I just go, give me, give me the fuck. And then I brought the gloves up because none of them dumbasses have ever been in a street fight in their life. Every weekend, my hands would be just tore up like someone ran a lawnmower over them because I was knocking teeth out and punching people's faces in. And I would go, in, hey, man, I, I get one fight tonight. I'm not going to be able to fight the next two. So I, I went to a, uh, a, a show, uh, or not a show, but a, a, like a sporting goods store, and I found a pair of bag gloves and they had a little like plastic thing in the middle I cut that out and I go this is perfect I got padding on here and I can wrestle I I, I remember at the fighters meeting in, in, in uh, wherever the hell it was Casper and I held up the thing and the whole room the big John did the football or not the football the cop goof was sitting in there and he's like, oh, you want to wear those? Go right ahead. And the whole room started laughing hysterically. So I go, okay, I'm wearing them. And we all saw what happened to Matua and everything else. And and they were like, oh, my God, this guy stumbled a lot. I didn't stumble across us because I was getting in a fight every three times a week and twice on the weekend. Because bare knuckle, you think, you, you, fools fight bare knuckle if you have a choice. I mean, anybody knows anything about boxing that you you wear gloves for your hands. So, <clears throat> as they said, they sat there and sat around and was like, and like, to this day, because I can't have anything, any influence in mixed martial arts, even that name, mixed martial arts. I was like the Hulk Hogan after that first uh, USC 6. 
Uh, yeah, that, that that's when you that's when you blew up and, and Yeah, that's that, uh, that's when I came home from that show and it was like nuts and I was not like really into it. I mean, these people were following me around but the, my people coming up to my parents' house. I, I just got out of jail and I was sleeping in the garage. I beat some cops son up that wanted to be beat up. He begged me to beat him up, so I gave it to him. And then he gets on, I took it to court, all the way to court. He gets on the stand, starts crying. Like I, I attacked him like I was a grizzly bear pissing on a church around a, right on the corner from where I worked. I'm like going, oh, my God, what is this guy doing? He's lying his ass off. Anyways, so I did that, and and then he, I mean, all of a sudden I was like a the scourge of society, and then I come, I go do the same thing, I go, I'm just do a year in jail, and, and I get out a year later, and I, I get out, and the next thing you know, I'm the toast of the town. People are coming up to me. I always, I was always a little bit famous. You know, like the tough guy of Huntington Beach. I was the original bad boy of Huntington Beach. And then Joe Silva and Tito thought it'd be cool. Just like... Yeah, they, uh, they appropriated your your nickname. On, on yeah, just like, just like Tito's trying to do with Hulk Hogan. How, you know, that, what an idiot. That, guy, that guy's a bad human being. But I, I wanna, I'm going to interrupt again. Kind of, just not really changing the subject. I asked that question about, you know, if fame affected you, and I never thought that it did. Again, I didn't know you before, but we we met around that time you blew up. I was more involved probably with pro wrestling than I was MMA. I know you don't like that term, but that's what it's called now. Um, you, know, you know what's funny about that? I was like Hulk Hogan, and all these guys used to ask me, which, which martial arts are you? And I said, hey, you know, I'm an American wrestler, and that's what it is. And I go, and then you have all this stuff. I went and learned uh, jujitsu and all that kind of stuff because I every it was working and I wanted to see what it was. So I went into these jujitsu places and I was learning it and and, and I was I gave it stroke, you know. And the same with striking. I was like, I, you know, I, I I'm pretty good with my hands. I, I was on the road to take that, but the point being is is that. Mixed martial arts came from me because everybody wanted to interview me. And I would sit there and I'd say, you know what? I took wrestling. I took boxing. I took submission. And I mixed them all together. So you could sit there around and stay there. And then all the haters are out there going to say, oh, yeah, right. He really came up with mixed martial arts. Well, nobody wanted to talk to you martial arts, jackass, grab-ass, Gracie guys after I got in there and started kicking everybody's ass. Like Tank at like Tank Murdoch from the Street Fighting Legend. Well, yep. that I was the Street Fighting Legend, and that's where Tank came from. Yep. And that, that's the whole thing. So, so mixed martial arts. Yes, the gloves. Yes, I'm the guy to put all of that on the map. Okay, so let's let's talk a couple more wrestling and fighting stories, and, and then in a and minute, fame. And in a fame. few minutes, I want to switch over. I want to switch over and tell people why on a conversation last week I I told them that you and Howard Stern now remind me of each other. And I know you're like, what the f? But, but we talked. Yeah. I want to get uh, it's it's Go a big ahead. before that though. You know, so I, I think it, it clearly you did not design yourself to be a a marketable. A figure. Nope. That's just what you became. You know who recognized that, and you know this, of course, was WWF at the time, not WWF and WCW, obviously. Uh, here's one for my producer, John, who knows everything about pro wrestling. And, John, I'll bet you didn't know this. After the Brawl for All tournament concluded and Bart Gunn won, you know, obviously, he fought Butterbean at WrestleMania. Do you, yeah. uh, John, I'll give you three guesses who they really wanted for that spot and who, gave, who got the offer for that spot. Were you were you aware that Tank was uh, re- approached and recruited to fight Bart Gunn? No, I didn't realize that. And you yes. were setting that up, I guess. I'm sorry. Were you setting that up? Well, that came it came through me. I brought it to Tank, and and it Tank again. Remind me if I have um, if I'm skewing the facts. I don't believe so. It was a decent offer, but it wasn't what you felt you were worth and deserved at that point. And and John, it's you know. I, People that I've done business with for years, you know, stars, celebrities, whatever you want to call them, some have a very realistic understanding of business. Others don't. They just inflate prices. 
in my mind, Dave, you you always understood it. You understood it from the beginning. I know you have a, an economics background and all that as well. Um, no, he, John, he turned it down because a money offer wasn't right. And uh, oh, wow, okay. I mean, Dave, that that's what I remember. Do, do I have that right? Oh, uh, uh, yes. And you know what? Wrestling was premature for me. You know, once again, talking about being a a person that that was about all that. I was not ready for professional wrestling. I was not ready to be known as a professional wrestler before fighting. And then once I got fighting out of the way and everybody knew I could kick ass, I wasn't like, and, and you know, I like Haiku and, and all that, Ming, and he, he's got the reputation of a badass, which he, I'm sure he is. And um, But I was not ready for that step, I needed to prove myself more and more that I was really a fighter. You know, I wasn't a professional wrestler slash fighter. I needed to, to get that first. I needed to be known as a fighter. And once I established that, yeah, I went to WWE on my own. And um, the the whole point of it and then Bean was there and the whole nine yards, but the gun part and that, that just happened to fall before I felt established in the UFC. Like right. at, that, at that time, at that time, they were going to get rid of the UFC. And there was a lot of pressure with McCain and all that kind of stuff. And you know what? If they would have got rid of it, that would have been fine because I finally established myself. I didn't run from fights anymore. I, I had a lot to prove to myself, not to anybody else. I, I wanted the world to know that I was a fighter before a professional wrestler. And then, you know, through wrestling, I went to the WWF first at, at the time, and then Eric found out about it and put a cock block on, not cock block, but called me up and said, hey, man, I'm way more interested than they are. And I said, well, and he goes, I'll have you Go go have fun with them, and I'll fly you down the next day, and, and I guarantee you make a deal you won't believe. I said, okay, well, I'm not going to argue with that. And I said, all, all I want in, the, in this whole thing is integrity. And he goes, well, Eric said, well, then you're with the right man. And he goes, and you know what? Everybody in this business, there's politics everywhere. And I would have loved to work for Vince and God, you know, it, things were meant to be. They were meant to be, and God knows my life's not over. So whoever knows. But so you go end, so now. You go to WCW, and I, and, and I go there. And I think you I think it was pretty well publicized at one point what the deal was. A very very rich deal. You you hadn't you hadn't done any pro wrestling work to that date that I know of at least. And you no. walk in with this huge deal. How 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 were you treated right out of the gate in the locker room? Um, everybody's cool in wrestling. Uh, I think they might have been a little bit of inti- intimidated by me. I'm sure Hall, um, Nash, Steiner, all those guys. I'll say the, all those guys were cool to me. None of them had anything to say. And um, they all were just kind of sitting back waiting and watching and trying to figure out because Eric said, I'm not going to use you for six months. And he goes, go have a good time. Just don't tell anybody. And I said, okay, because you'll be on the payroll tomorrow, which I was. So you're getting your exercise, walk into the mailbox to collect your checks, basically. Well, I was running to the mailbox. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Anyways, but so as political times went on, uh, you know, Eric and Russo and all that stuff started happening, and I was kind of like, wow, I'm just up floating in limbo. And then they called me up and said, hey, what's going on? You're just sitting at home I'm paying you a lot of money. And I'm going, well, Eric said he had a huge plan for me. What his plan was, I have no idea, but I'm sure it was very near the top of being where you want to be. Well, you, you know, Texas. you've got to know, I'm sure, that there's a legend for years now that they were going to put the heavyweight title on you like your first day in. Is is? Do you know yeah, that? Uh, is that true? Yeah, I, I don't comment on any of that because I don't know if it's true. 
Okay. All I can tell all I can tell you one thing is that Eric, regardless of what he paid me or whatever, is a, is a really smooth, good guy. Yeah. I, hey, John, we should dial Bischoff in for a second. Would you be cool with that take if we could reach him? Uh, yeah, I got no problem talking with Eric. I, I, I enjoy Eric. He's a nice John, guy. do we have the capability to do that? Uh, possibly, yes. Right, why don't you look into it, and we'll keep talking for a minute if we decide okay. we want to go that that route. Okay. We'll we'll go that route. Um, Dave, it, before that, I, I want to ask you a little more about fighting and, and your mentality toward it. Um, I remember like the early fights, Matua. Uh, a guy named Steve Nelmark, I think it was. Yeah. I mean, some good. of the most brutal knockouts, even to even up to the present time, these are still highlight reel knockouts. And, yeah. and and I just have to say, I'll just come out and say it. You seem like you took a, a lot of pleasure in the aftermath of those knockouts. Um, and not, not, I, not, you know, not necessarily in their pain or how they felt. And you know what? I, I was a well, yeah, when I was a young man, boy, I, I was a I was a dastardly son of a bitch. I mean, I I I, I was a really brutal man, and I'm not in a good way or a bad way or any way. But I I boy, you get you get in a cage and you're trying to kill me, and I'm trying to kill you. Hey, man, it, it all it's all on. You you you. You know, uh, when I got Matua as my first fight, I was like, oh, my God. You know, I don't know if you remember back in the day, all the Samoans from Westminster. The, oh, yeah, yeah, of course. The Poes and all those guys were there, my friends, and everything now, and they were then. But, they, you know, they had a little Samoan charge and a Tongan charge and whatever those people are over there. They're South Pacific people. Mm-hmm. And, they, they, and they were all like, you know, they had a reputation back in the streets back in those days, but oh hell yeah, they still do out there in Carson and Westminster. Still. Oh hell yeah, they're they're tough people, and and uh, I I was around back then, and I wasn't afraid of them, and I, you know I don't know if they're afraid of me, but they they uh, they knew they, they everybody around here knew who was who, and that you know when when you're having a fight show at the Gracies and you're big John McCarthy and you call up people and go, Hey, you know this Tank Abbott is guy? Not Tank at the time, but, but do you ever Dave Abbott is? And they're oh you hey, that guy runs Orange County. All these kids nowadays they don't they don't know anything. They, they, there was a whole different walk of life back in those days, kiddos. And uh there, you you want to walk around with a chip on your shoulder? You're gonna get it. You're gonna get it knocked off, or you're gonna protect. It. And uh, there's a lot of things happen, you know. And I got my ass kicked now and then. I fought groups of people. I, ne- I was never afraid to fight ten people. I got sucker punched with hammers. I had cheap ass cowards. And Something I wonder about your Huntington Beach days. I'm just gonna ask you. Um, uh-huh. And this is a little inside. People probably want to know who I'm talking about, but. Did you? So well, I won't stand up for long. But did you ever run into Hank Hill or Rusty Coons back in those days? No, I know who they are, but uh, I, Hank Hill, I don't know, but I know who Rusty Coons is. Yeah, you know Rusty. Yeah, uh, Rusty. Rusty's a long time friend. He was actually on the show about a month ago. Yeah, um, no. he's but, a good guy. I mean, he worked on my bike a few times, and I know some mutual friends of his. I was just curious. Yeah, Rusty, for those who don't know, is the chapter of the Hells Angels in Orange County at one point now, now in San Fernando. Yeah, he's he's, he's a a big son of a bitch, too. Yeah, 6'6", 300, and the real deal. I mean, he looks like... Yeah, well, he was on that, what show was it? Uh, Yeah, he he got hired as a technical consultant on Sons of Anarchy, and then he got on set, and they're like, holy hell, why do we not have you on the show? So it made him uh, one of the leads for a couple... I was just curious if you guys... We're friends, if you had any run-ins. Um, just something I always wondered. Again, most people probably don't know what I'm talking about, but I wanted to ask you. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I know Rusty and, and his friends. They're they're all cool people, you know. Yep. Not, yeah, they are. Not uh, my, so, that's, hey, not my, that's not my uh, cup of tea of life. I mean, I, I, I do let's my Let's switch to this Howard Stern analogy for a moment. Uh-huh. <laughs> we'll go back to the, uh, the the fighting and the wrestling stuff. So, I, so uh, John, I said, to, I said to Tank on the phone last week, because we've, we've talked a bit lately. We were out of touch for a couple of years, and then we got back in touch, and we've had some good conversations. And personally, I'm just so happy to hear that 
you, you've come out of your trials the way that you have. You know, mm-hmm. I want to say with the attitude that you have. I know your attitude's always been positive, um, and you, you'll probably, I don't know if it's uh, comfortable for me to say this or not, but to me it's like you almost sound kind of like downright introspective now. I don't know if that comes with age or yeah, yeah. experience or yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you know what I uh, thought about this, and like I told you, you have a long time to think about it when you're laying in your hospital bed and you're, you've got somebody else's liver hanging out of you. But, um, uh, you know, I'd sit back and, and just ponder all the things I've done in my life. And, and depending on how much you pissed me off before I beat you up, cause I, I, well, once again, you know, there's a lot of people out there that get misconstrued with the ideas of, being tough, when looking tough, when you're when you're like a steroid tool, that and for you to even think about it, having to take steroids, you're, you're obviously a mentally weak human being. So that whole point of looking like a steroid idiot is, just blows my mind. So the only people that are really, you know, they get all mad, they mad that they get that roid rage act, and then you punch them in the face, and they go, oh my god, this. This shit ain't not gonna happen here. I'm gonna get my ass kicked, and, and I would I got beat on some people that that maybe shouldn't have been beat on that didn't really know what they were getting into, you know? Because I I don't look like a a guy that benches 600 pounds and runs marathons. Uh, you're, you, do I hear you saying you actually have regret over some of that? Or no, I, I, I wouldn't go as far as say regret. Right? <laughs> right. I, 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 I was a little surprised because I thought I heard that for a second, but I no, thought I must no, be no, no, I, I, sit, I sit back and go, well, you know, these guys didn't know what they were really getting into, but you want to know what? That, that's not, I guess I taught them what they got into, and hopefully they never did it to another guy. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, right, so yeah. let me put it this way then. Knowing what you know now, um, be, being the person who you are now and, and the one that I've been talking with lately, if would you do it all would you do it all the same again or would there be any would there be a fundamental difference? No, I'd do it all the same. Okay. Fair enough. Maybe That's maybe, great maybe take forward maybe, answer, my friend. Yeah, maybe uh run a little faster like the last time I beat up a cop son. <laughs> well, all right. That, that's good. Hey, you hear that out there? That's advice from Tank Abbott. If you beat up a cop, son, run fast. Yeah, run fast and don't work right around the corner from where you did it. Hey, well, what, what do you do? Um, what do you do all day, every day now? What's your What's your life like these days? Oh man, I, I am. I just got out of the hospital maybe four days ago. So okay. I've been I've been doing a lot of hanging out in my uh, recliner, watching TV. What are you watching? Oh, I like to watch Fox News. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, no, no politics on Talking Tough, by the way. I, I know. As soon as I said that, but I, okay. that's awesome. Yeah, I, I, um, yeah. uh, here's a good. Here's a good Tank Abbott question. Yeah. Do you have Do you have any kind of spiritual practice? No, I don't. Um, but you know, through the trials and tribulations. Uh, that I've gone through in the last couple of years, it's uh, becoming more and more uh, interesting to ask myself about those questions. I've never had any answers or anything to follow up with it, but uh, yeah, no, it's not. Do you uh, um, do you feel yourself leaning in? Okay, this conversation has definitely taken a different direction now, but you, you've got me curious. Do you, do you feel yourself possibly going in that direction? No, I, I I I don't see myself going that way. But you know, there's, there's, yeah, there's, yeah, you're open to it possibly. Yeah, okay, I'm not, yeah, yeah, not trying yeah, to convert you, by the way. That's not that's not yeah, me. I'm no, just, no, yeah. that's not like a conversion kind of situation. But no, it just makes you scratch your head. That's all. Where okay. maybe before I would never scratch my head. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Oh, someone's asking on the. And I'm going to throw to a couple of questions here in a moment. Mm-hmm. I was asking yeah. Howard Stern question mark. I, all I was saying, guys, is you know I, I was a huge, huge Howard Stern fan, as I was a Tank Abbott fan, and Howard used to be. Um, I don't know. Can I think it's fair to say that uh, Tank Abbott was the Howard Stern of the cage, and Howard Stern was the Tank Abbott of the radio. Um, 
I don't think either of you guys really cared what anybody thought about anything, which I think was part of the part of your beauty and your strength and a big part of what made you guys who you are. And I think Howard had the same perception. People were like, oh, this guy's crude, he's rude, he's this, he's that, but they, but they couldn't help but watch him. And uh, as we were talking about on the phone, he went, just recently, you and I, he went through some near-death experiences. He since has become, let's say, quote-unquote, spiritual, because it's not religious. Um, and he wrote a new book, man, which I just loved. And he talks about just, you know, a change of heart about how he looks at people and looks at life now. And about how, you know, he, he do things mostly the same. But it, it does feel like he maybe took a little bit of advantage as well. So it just sounded, that, I'm just out answering the question that someone's asking out here. It sounded to me like Howard Stern and Take Abbott were running some parallels in their lives. That's what, that's yeah, what. Yeah, I, I would have to agree with that. You know, like I said, there, there's there's things that you just kind of go, oh, poor, poor people. I mean, they got what they deserved and, and they begged for it, but, you know, they kind of, some, some guys didn't know what they're getting into. You know, hey, David you Isaacs at, is watching. David, hey, man. David, David Isaacs is listening to this right now. Oh, my. He's a, a longtime friend of yours. Yes, and uh, shalom, David. For uh, <laughs> Shalom, David. Happy New Year, man. I hope you're... Yeah, no, what's the other, what's the other one? Uh, Passover. He's... Well, that, all that good. Happy Passover. You're a better Jew than I am, Tank. I should know that stuff, man. Thank you yeah. for the, uh, the bail out there. Oh, it's your past Passover is what it is. But. That's right. Yeah. You're right. Uh, and it's great. I have some Jewish friends on here right now. I'm going to catch hell for this later. Oh, well. Sorry, everybody. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> is it like New Year's? Is that the way I look at it? I don't know. David, but, yeah. uh, David Isaac says, Shalom back at you guys. There we uh, go. Yeah, so. <laughs> right. So what do you um What's the next few? What do you I look? You, I know we don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. We don't know, but That's a true if statement. you could lay it out, what do you? What are your hopes for the next couple of years, few years? Oh well, you, what you in, know. what interests you now? What excites you? Anything? Well, I, I truly want to get back to uh, a really good state of health. You know, okay. uh, my my whole life, I, like I said, my dad was a football coach, and everything has been training to me ever since I've been. Knee height or grasshopper. So, like, training to me and getting back in there and being able to throw down, maybe not like I used to when I was a youngster, but I'll tell you one thing, I'll, I'll give it a good damn try. Bust your ass up. And uh, I'll, I'll be happy to get to that point. And that's something that's in my head. But, you know, we'll take it as far as it goes that far way. And then as far as that's What's going on in my life? I don't know what's next. Shit. I'm well, un- good bet. Unlike- if you were a betting man, uh, honest to God, I'd, I'd probably be locked up behind bars back in the, the travels and tribulations I was going down. But I'm a good person, and I don't let that happen to me. I, I don't I do not do anything bad to people. I, the only bad people come back and go, what, like, like we were talking about other things. And uh, the like the fighters and the people they all get they all get exposed to who they really are. And I'm a good person, and I I never. Done I, I've al- I've always known you to be man. I've always known that. Um, mm-hmm. Do you have a, like best friends in this business and in, in the mixed martial arts or pro wrestling business or anybody you stay in touch with? You know, a lot of people call me a, a hermit a lot because I. Only person I really like to hang out with is my wife. She's like the greatest person. And I'm so. How long have you and. Uh, can I say her name? Is that all right? Yeah, so, it, Sally. So, yeah, okay, good. So, yeah, D- Dave's wife is Sally. And how long did you guys know each other before you got married? Oh, man. How long? <laughs> no, I'm not going to mess that up. I have to ask her. No, you better not. Now, now <laughs> yeah. you're in trouble. Yeah, no, like she's saying, five years. So what you know was, what? When, when, when one of the first times I'm when, when I not one of but when I first met her, I said, "Hey, can I go for a ride on my bike?" Next thing you know, we're driving up the coast, going towards uh, San Luis Obispo. Next thing you know, we're at. Uh, then we went up Bend, Oregon, and then we're all the way across. We ended up riding all the way up to. Uh, 
What what's that, Sally? Connecticut, what's above it? Connecticut. Maine. Yeah, I went up to Maine and had some lobster up there all on two wheels. Wow, that was like that was kinda of like your first quote unquote date? Yeah. Yeah, That's and uh, and you wanna know what? You know, how long Sally? Sixty three days long. Sixty three days long and zero arguments. That's a hell of a way to get started, man. And how is uh how is she reacted to being in the Tank Abbott world? I, I know you have a huge support system in her and vice versa, which is just a, a blessing, obviously. Yeah, no, she's she's awesome. She's like my rock. I truly believe I'd be dead without her. But uh Well Sally, she, thanks for uh thanks for keeping Tank with us. We all appreciate it. Um, I couldn't imagine doing anything else. <laughs> That's all. Well, he means everything to me. You're, 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 a, you're a lucky man, Dave. Yes, I am. I'm so lucky. I have no idea. And I just, and it's awesome to have somebody like that and just, you know, all the people that I've met in my life and then just to meet her is just awesome. She's, well, I'm, she's, I'm happy she's the you. best. Yeah, it's awesome. Hey, uh, B- Big Cat Tom Erickson is on. Hey, Tom, how are you doing, man? Um, He's one of my uh, – do you know Tom Erickson, Dave? Oh, yeah, I know a lot of people, but, you know, you have to stir the embers up. Tom is the big heavyweight who used to train with and pretty routinely beat up on my good friends, Mark Coleman and Mark Kerr. And Oh, yes, his, yes, yes, yes. I, I don't know him personally, but I do know who he is. And I yeah, he's a good dude. Hey, Tom. Um, Glad you're on, man. I admired his professional, or not professional wrestling, but his amateur wrestling back in the day. He was one of my heroes back in those days of oh, wrestling. Cool. Yeah, then they, they, the legend is they wouldn't bring him into UFC because they had Coleman and had Kerr, and they thought he'd be a threat to him. So whatever. I just yeah. wanted to say hi and see if you guys knew him. Oh, to Tom, uh, we never really personally met, but uh, he's always been a big, uh, I've always been a big fan of his. Well, yeah. there you go, Tom. Hank Abbott is a fan of yours, and, and I'm sure vice versa, so that's cool. Hope maybe you guys will meet one day. And, you know, Dave, that, that brings an idea of mine that I, I wanted to ask you about. So WWE, as you probably know, they have these legends deals where they have guys like, you know, Honky Tonk Man, Coco Beware, under contract. Yeah. And, they you yeah. know, they pay them every month to kind of be available to do appearances or whatever, be ambassadors, that sort of thing. Sure. Shouldn't UFC have something like that? Yeah, you know, the UFC has their own little packaging and and you know, they have the um Hall of Fame and everywhere I go everybody says, Oh, Tank Abbott the Hall of Fame guy and I'm like, No, I'm not really the Hall of Fame And you know Oh you wait, you're not in the UFC Hall of Fame? No, they haven't put me in the U uh, Hall of Fame. Oh, and, that makes no and sense. That, All right. and, well you, you know, and then I tell I tell people that, you know, I would be, you know, Honored to be in the in, in the, the USC, and you know, in the USC uh, Hall of Fame, you know, and uh, but that's you know, in the younger days, it's like, hey, fuck you, I don't care, but it'd be nice to be recognized. Uh, you know, back then, you when you have uh, what's it, well, the thing I had, Sally, what the hell's it called? Uh, cirrhosis of the liver. You know, when you get cirrhosis, you have these things where, you know, they have, they say you have a wet brain and all that kind of stuff. It's a real, it's really a true statement. And there is a, 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 a period in my life that I was, I was off my rocker crazy. I was a crazy man. And I had nothing, uh, you know, it was not like a something that. Yeah, it's an illness, and it's called encephalopathy. Encephalitis, right? Yeah, and and it makes. That's you, a bitch. Yep. Oh yeah, but and then there's a lot of people that that um they were un brought up like you know I, I was I was out of my mind. It's crazy and like. Cuckoo crazy, like one flew over the cuckoo's nest, crazy, N- not like something you could say out of my mind. And, and I definitely have, missed it during this period of your life. Thank God. All right, go oh, ahead. Yeah. 
Yo, that was crazy, crazy. It was not just like uh, whatever. It was like, it, it was not in my control. I, and I, you know, I had some phone numbers I shouldn't have had. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Who Who'd you call, man? All sorts of people. And, and did you call Dana? I'm sure I did. But <laughs> right. That might 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 be a little bit of why I'm not in the Hall of Fame right now. <laughs> All right, well, with David Isaacs is still on the line. David, you and I got to talk. And Tank may not care, but if anybody should be in the hall, it should be him. So let's figure it out, brother. Yeah, yeah. That's my new uh, campaign I want to announce today. Yeah, that would be awesome if you got me on that. And, you know, I'm sure Dana's a little afraid of of, what I might say, but anybody can ever tell you, and I'm sure you can attest, that I I dearly have class and I have respect for, uh, you know. I I have never seen you conduct yourself in any way other than cool and professional. Yeah, you like to have your fun. That's fine. But – you always take care of business. You're always respectful. I know that. And I and people that do business with you know that, you know. Perception yeah. and reputation they're 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 different than reality. This is true. And uh you know, but you know what it's 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 kind of fun in the sense, not for me, but for the people that are haters. And you know, you you can't say, Hey, well you think you're a tough guy? Well why don't you fight everybody that says they want to fight? And you can pretty much rest assured that back in the day I would. And I say, oh, you want to be a big mouth? Uh, you just you keep on talking, and uh, we're gonna go. And that would be that. But as far as as, as things go by, I, I you know what? It's everybody's game to to want to play tough. And if you want to play tough, go be tough. But you know what? I'm, I'm pretty self assured that the people out there know that I, I'm. I'm I'm for reals. There's, there's not, it's not made up. It's not something that uh, you've never been in a street fight in your life and you tell people that you've been in a million. No, and you know what? Most most people haven't, as it turns out. But um, r- ra- rather than, than getting too in, into that, um, yeah. I, I kind of – we're supposed to we're supposed to do this in an hour. We're an hour and a half. Like I said, we could talk all day. There's so much to talk about. Sure. Um, I'm ho- I'm hoping I can bring you back on at at some point if you're cool with that and um, may- maybe even do one in person that that would be great. Um, you know uh-huh. I've never known you to be like be anybody that pimps anything or pushes or promotes. But is is, is there anything that you want people to take a look at? Anything to go uh, log on to? Well, there's nothing really that I have to, to say. I mean, everything is the truth and. Uh, Obviously, we couldn't get a hold of Eric, but if you ever do, tell him that I have nothing but good things to say about the man. Absolutely. Yeah, Bischoff is always a good guy in my experience as well. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, For uh, sure. And Eric, and, kudos and to you, my friend, if you're out there. Yeah, and anything about, uh, you know, about uh, being in the Hall of Fame, I wouldn't mind being in it. I'm uh, very respectful about well, then, I, then I'm going to put this out there for everybody that is watching on Facebook Live, for everybody that's going to listen to this afterwards at uh, TalkingTough.com, and I'll, I'm, pimp, I'm going to pimp that in a minute. Guys, start sending emails into UFC. Um, I have Dana's email address. I don't think it would be smart to give that out. So if, yeah. if you go on the UFC site, you'll see where you can write them. Um Tank, and I'm not saying this because he's a guest on the show today. And, and Dave, I think you know, being sincere with this, you deserve to be in the Hall of Fame, and it, it'd be a hell of a speech to see too. I would love to see that. Um, <laughs> but more than that, it's about your body of work, who you are as a person, what you meant to the sport. So, uh, hey guys and girls out there in uh, Facebook Live land, please send an email to UFC uh, requesting slash demanding that Tank Abbott be in the UFC Hall of Fame. It's a no-brainer. And hey, Rick, you know, as I say here, part of it is being that uh, um, I don't, part of my warrior, who I am person, uh, I'm not begging and I'm not doing anything. If it's meant to be, it's meant to be. But I, I don't, uh, I'm not out there going, oh, oh, oh let me in the U.S. Oh, no, and I, and I didn't mean it, I didn't mean it for it to come off the way. That That's me doing that, not you. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Absolutely. 
Well, Dave, man, I'm so glad to hear that you're doing well. Um, Sally, my best regards to you if you're there and listening still. Thanks for uh, thanks for she's keeping in, Dave, uh, she's in the, being she's with in, us. She's in the kitchen, but I'll tell her she. You All said right, that. cool. And man, I really, really appreciate you you taking the time. Um, any uh, any parting words for uh, people that are listening to you today? Uh, well, just uh, just remember. You can always be tough. It's up to you. It's not about proving anything to anybody. It's about proving everything to you. It's all about proving everything to yourself. The toughness is being true to yourself and doing the right thing in the process, man. I'm, I'm so down with that. Everybody, thank you so much for listening today. Uh, after uh, beginning tomorrow, this interview, along with a whole bunch of other really good ones, if I say so myself, are at www.talking-tough.com. Please log on, please support, write a review, whatever the case may be. Very much appreciate you guys supporting. So far, uh, the Talking Tough show has taken off. We're doing really well, thanks to all of you. And and Dave Tank Abbott, man, thank you. I'm, I'm glad to uh, to be able to talk with you today and any day. Thank you, my friend. Hi, my, my pleasure. I hope everything you got takes off on your show, buddy. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Tank. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. And everybody out there, if you're still watching, thank you for watching today. Again, please log on to www.talking-tough.com. If you subscribe, please subscribe or any of the uh, services that, that you prefer, Spotify, um, iHeartRadio, uh, Apple, if you click on the Apple link to subscribe there, you can also write a review. Um, good, bad, or indifferent would love to get reviews. Uh, it helps me become better. And to be honest, more reviews, a better chance we have of moving up on the charts also. So thank you for your uh, support, everybody. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Support us on Patreon.com for $1.99 a month to watch our full shoot interviews ad-free and help our channel grow. Follow us on Twitter at The Hannibal TV for instant updates.